in this video, I want to talk about something very, very special. Doctor Who! I love Doctor Who. I have the first five series now, and I spent the month of July watching the first four series with my brother. And it was an amazing experience. And it was great because as someone who started with the fifth season and only had like vague knowledge of the fourth season, it was great to go from the beginning with Nine and Rose and really kind of understand people who like grew up and watched these characters first to come back and be like, okay, here's what people are talking about. Here's the RTV experience. And me, from someone who started with Moffat, to kind of go back and watch it. And so I divided, like, what I want to talk about in this episode into the following character categories. You know, the series I liked in order from most good to um, least favorite. My favorite official companions, you know, my list. And my opinion on the doctors that, have, that I've seen from 9 and, uh, 9 and 10. Like, I already talked about 11. So this is basically just for the RTDs run. My favorite of the four series is series four. I love Donna Noble. I, to me, she is my favorite companion of the companions that we have seen. Um, other than Sarah Jane, because Sarah Jane is my HBIC, but that's different. Of the official companions of the series, I love Donna the most. I feel like she is the companion that the Doctor needs. Someone who's there to be her, his friend, to, is not afraid to give him back chat about some of the stupid shit that he does. And she brings out humanity in him in a different way than I think that um, Martha and Rose did. And even in the future with how Amy and Rory do. And I also felt like this series had some of like, some really strong episodes in comparison to the other one. I know people hate like the Doctor's daughter and shit like that. But I feel in general like I really love the chemistry between the Doctor and um, Donna so much. And I love Silence of the Library because then I get my River song. You know, and I love the episodes. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Midnight was a great episode, and I, the, um, and what I really love is just, like, she disagrees with his ideology, and, sh and we also get to see the doctor at, like, I think some of his highs and lows really shine in this series. Like, I felt like it felt his highs and lows in, like, other series, especially two. Uh, uh, I'm gonna talk about series two in, in a bit, but... This series, I really felt like we got a complete look at who the Doctor is. And I feel like that journey was done best because you had a companion who did not idolize him the way um, Martha and Rose did. They did not idolize, she did, Donna does not idolize the Doctor. She enjoys hanging with him, that's her friend, but that's it. And I think that was perfect because then we finally get to see the Doctor through the eyes of someone who doesn't think that he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I felt like it was one of the most well-rounded series and I love, love Donna. After that, I love series three. Like, people hate Martha. Psh, I love Martha Jones. I will say this. I dislike how her character was treated. But I'll talk more about that when I talk about the actual companion. I think, with the exception of um, the dialogue, the dialects in Manhattan two-parter, that the episodes in this series were really good. I mean, the Family of Blood episodes are just spot on. I mean... In terms of just how it works with, like, Don and her relationship with the Doctor, just the Doctor himself as this normal, you know, John Smith character, finally playing the mask, you know, he pretends to be human, walk among us, but here's the Doctor as a human, falling in love, going through these emotions, It's and having him have to give that up, you know, it's such a great story, and I feel like that was kind of a story that I wanted to see in, like, series two, and a little bit in series one, but I think that episode just... It was brilliant to me. It was amazing. It's probably one of my favorite episodes in in the series I've seen, uh, even of all six. I've seen six too, but you know, it was a, it was a really strong you know season to me to see that so many people hated. It, I'm just kind of like, wow, I don't, I don't get it. But I guess it's probably had to do with you know Martha. But I love Martha as a companion. I think she was really great. Like I said, I hate how she was treated, but overall, she stepped up to the plate numerous times protecting the doctor, taking care of him, even supporting him and, you know, blink when he had, she had to, like, support him, get a job and whatever, because the doctor doesn't want to get a job. So, I love Martha. I loved this entire series. I think, like, it's one of my, one of the best of the ones I've seen. I would, I would even rank that higher than five, and I love five. But, I enjoyed this series immensely. 
Third is series one. I love the Ninth Doctor. I know people are hating on him. I'm just like, why do you hate on Christopher Eccleston? He is great at playing the Doctor that he's supposed to be playing. I'll talk about that when I talk about his character, but I just feel like almost every single thing about this series was grade A. It was a great introduction to the series because it's for me, thinking about, you know, I don't know this is Ninth Doctor. It's a break between eight and nine. So it introduces this new world very seamlessly, you know. It it has really good episodes. I think Father's Day is probably one of the saddest episodes I've ever seen. And Dialect is amazing. You know, what drags it down, however, are those Slovene episodes. Like, holy shit, who came up with those? Um, but other than that, you know, it was great. Billy Piper's a brilliant actress. Even though I don't like Rose, she's great at playing that character. Eccleston was great. I mean, this man has comedic timing. He can do drama. He can do so many different things. To say that people hate him, you know, is beyond me. I really don't get it. But I love... I Actually, I prefer 9 with Rose than 9 with 10. I'll talk about that later, too. And I love, you know, um, Captain Jet being right to the mix. Like, that was like... That triple team TARDIS was just seamlessly done. So good. So interesting and I just I, I really love that season you know it really like if it wasn't for Slovene episodes and some like kind of like eh, moments it would definitely be like probably above three but I and also I don't really like Rose that much so that also drags it down but overall it's an amazing introduction to this season to the series if you've never seen Doctor Who it's a great place to start because it just it does it that you can tell it plays homage to the classics but also tries to do something a little bit new and I really love that about it now, series two, to me, is horrible. It's got some of the worst episodes, and I absolutely despise Ten and Rose. Like, let me say this, Billy Piper and Dave Tennant are amazing actors, but they are complete imbeciles together. Like, that's why I don't really like them as a couple, because for some reason, I don't understand why the Doctor puts all this immense faith and almost hero worshipping onto Rose. It's like, it, it just seems so exhausting. It's like they go around having all these adventures, you know, laughing it up, ha ha ha, tee hee hee. Even when something bad is happening, like with the werewolf episode, people are getting killed and they're just like, oh, look at the werewolf! Wee! I'm just like, what's wrong with you guys? Like, people are dying. Say we when everything's done, be excited to keep just trying to make Queen Victoria say she's not amused when there are people dying. They just come off as really, really two assholes this entire you know, series. And it really turned me off to the entire thing. Like, their chemistry, while, while, it, while they are, like, two really good actors and play the roles really well, the writing, to me, makes them look like complete assholes. And I didn't enjoy watching them together at all. And I think that Doomsday is probably the best episode of this entire series. I thought it was great. Well done. I didn't like how they did an alternate world where the father was alive. I'm just thinking, like, Father's Day, that's so well. It was such a sad episode, you know? And we saw the end of Rose's dad to bring him back and to be like, oh, yeah, he's alive in this dimension. And now Rose can have, like, her mom and her dad. It, it just, it was so irritating because I don't like how Rose, at the end of this series, all right, I'll talk about it when I get to Rose. Basically, this, this series was not good. Doomsday was the best episode. It was the only episode where I really felt for, like, Rose and Ten. It's, it has the weakest episodes, weakest companion doctor relationship to me. I just don't like it. Um, and that's basically it. My favorite companions in order are... Let me break out my list. The, the official companions are Donna, Martha, then Rose, Season 1 Rose, Mickey, Adam, and then Season 2 Rose. Um... If I counted Sarah Jane, she'd be, like, above Donna because she's HBIC. But, um, let's talk about each of them. I love Donna because she's independent of the Doctor. Like, I can see her having her own life and not just being obsessed with it. But I also, like, I mourn Donna. I mourn the fact that she got completely shafted at the end of her arc and lost so much of her character development for no reason. It really breaks my heart, and it's so sad because... She grew up more than any other character. I think of the companions. She became a better person through her interaction with the Doctor. It improved her. Whereas I would say what Rosa made her worse, and with Martha, she became a little bit more independent. But it's not like she was a slacker to begin with. But Martha evolved, and to see that her evolution was lost, 
I just hate it for that. I hate how they ended her seat, her series, and I hate the fact that like she'll never know how amazing of a person she is, and that's just like, the worst thing you could do to someone, make them accomplish so much and be so, you know, important, and then nothing. It's erased. I enjoy Martha as a companion because she is strong. She is strong. She's independent for the most part. My issue with her is how blatant it is that she's there to be the anti-Rose. And her relationship with the doctor is based on being the anti-Rose in every way. I mean, in every way she's different from Rose. Economically, racially, you know, work-wise. She's completely different from Rose. But in some ways she's actually better than Rose for the doctor. Because they're kind of more similar than Rose and the doctor were. But she's completely given the shaft in terms of, like, interaction, development. And she, she's not written to the best of her ability. She's an episode where she shines, of course, but she's not given the full Monty. It's always like they're afraid to make her too good. But I feel like in the House Family of Blood episode, I look at this woman and I'm thinking, she loves the Doctor and she wants what's best for him, but she has to protect him from himself, from, from giving in to these these uh, these um these desires to be human and having to deal with also racial prejudice of like being called colored and being seen as unintelligent and having to be his servant his maid you know it's degrading but she does it because she cares and she wants to help him and you know she, she her family gets tortured you know and treated horribly for a year a year even though it's time was rewritten they'll never forget that 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 trauma will be stuck with them for life you know and. For her to just be able to leave the TARDIS and be like, you know what, this is amazing, but I get the fuck out of here. I give her so much respect for that. I I find Jack entertaining. He's a fun, fun companion. I feel like if he was a woman, people would probably not like him as much. But I think he's fun. I think he brings a really good dynamic to the TARDIS when he's brought with the Doctor, especially Nine. Because... Just the way it's kind of, he's all kind of like blase about it. It's just, when like, I remember the scene where he kisses the doctor, he's just kind of like, hm, that's nice. It, 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 he's, he's just a fun character, and to have him in Torch and see him, you see that he's more than just like a playboy. He cares about people. He, he, he is so much more than the sex guy that people kind of like make him seem in fandom now. And I really enjoy watching him do his thing. He's a fun companion to me, and I just love having him around. I love that he's put in sparringly so that... We can enjoy him when he's there, and we can miss him when he's gone. After Jack is season one Rose. I think season one Rose is a great character, or a better character than a season two Rose, because of the d relationship she has with Nine. Nine, while he cares for Rose and obviously has a relationship with Rose, he does not treat Rose with the immense, you know... She, he doesn't give to her the kind of hero treatment that I feel like the, that Ten gives her. Like, I think from Father's Day, doc, the doctor made it very clear, like, look, you're my companion, my friend, but don't fuck with me. Because there's this look that he gives to her at the end of Father's Day that's just like, okay, this worked out well, but you fucked up. And don't do it again. That I feel like, I don't understand how Ten could come in, you know, season, series two, and be like, I trust her with the world. I'm like, no, she almost destroyed the entire universe to get her father back, you know. Forget the bad wolf thing, you know. The, the relationship between them is what made it bad. But I feel like with Nine and Rose, there's this great dynamic to them, you know. You really see her kind of like trying to get into this world and she's having a good time. And she has an excuse for her, her, her immaturity because she's young and flighty, and this is the beginning of her experience, you know. She's really in it to have the good time, and the doctor is there to have a good time, but he's also an anchor. He does not let her think that they're not equals, you know, and that's not the way it, it should be in the sense that she's not experienced or level-headed enough to have that kind of kind of informed opinion. It doesn't that she's stupid or whatever, but just saying, like, the doctor is the doctor. And for him to be with someone who's not as knowledgeable about time, and to have proven themselves to have incompetencies, I don't see how she could end up being the way she is in series two. But then, I 
after season one rose, I love Mickey. Mickey is so underrated. He is so bullshitted. I'm so happy that now they corrected that mistake with Rory. But Rose treats Mickey like shit and gets away with it because, you know, she's like the doctor and who could blame her for that? But, um, I like Mickey. He's fun. I enjoy having him being there. Adam was pointless. He's just on the list because he was there. Actually, I'm going to take him off the list because I didn't put, um, Donna's grandpa, so Adam shouldn't be there anyway. Take him out. Um, then there's season two Rose. Season two Rose is annoying to me because of her relationship with the doctor. It's so overblown, so made to make it seem like she's the most epic, epic relationship he's ever been. But it's just like she's not, and there's no way she can be. I mean, I get it, she's sweet and she's kind of whatever, but let's say, like, how many human companion, female companions has he had that had, like, the same quality that Rose has, or better than, you know? She's not special. In the sense that I can see why he would be like, yeah, I choose her to save the universe. I mean, she's special in the sense that she's a fun companion and she works well with him. And that he can, like, show off to her and whatnot because she's young. But other than that, I don't get, like, I, I can see or, or this is the relationship between Dr. and River Song. Because River Song has some of the qualities that the doctor himself has. And she's experienced. He's not some kind of little kid. But Rose is some little kid. And she acts that way. And she doesn't show maturity to me. I mean, she feels bad for people, but she also gets jealous and flighty and really, really stupid at times. And really, the entire time I would watch them in season two, I felt like they were in the TARDIS, farting and enjoying their own farts. Like, they, they, looked, they seemed like the kind of people who enjoyed to smell their own farts. And I felt they were just kind of having around, not giving two shits. That when Doomsday happened, I'm kind of like, well, you guys need to remember that this is not a little game you know, that you're playing all the time. And I just never liked them together. I, I found that Rose took a big curveball because they try to make her seem like, you know, she's this epic love for the Doctor when everything she did could have been done by Martha or Donna or Amy. She's not special. Her actress is amazing and the character could be so much more if there wasn't this kind of projection of being like, yes, she's the companion to end all companions. Because she's not. And, and I don't say that she can't be your favorite or she's not a great companion, but she's not the end-all, be-all the way she's put in the show. And that's what irritates me. Because I had to deal with that for like two series and then to have her be brought back in season four to get the most... Oh my god. It irritates me how she gets this perfect, perfect happy ending. She gets her father back from the dead. She gets her mo oh, She's rich now. Then she gets her own doctor who will be human and live with her, and, and they'll die together. And Donna gets bull fucking shit, and Martha gets trauma for the rest of her life. But Rose gets what money, father, and man. What? What did she do to deserve that? That the other two did not deserve? It, to me, it's just kind of looks like it's so much projecting onto her that it's, it, it makes me just dislike her in that series and on. But season one, Rose... I'll always enjoy her, because I felt like her relationship with the Doctor was, was just great on. Now for 9 and 10 themselves. Um, 9 to me is like the midlife crisis Doctor, you know? Everything from the way he dresses to the way he acts. He's very, you know, angry and gruff and aggressive, and I felt like that was perfect for who he was at that time and considering what happened to him, you know, previously with the Time War. And I, I love 9. Honestly, he's one of my, I think he's he's a great doctor. I think people because David Tennant was so made the role his own and made what people thought was like a traditional way the doctor should be that people just like yeah he's the best. But I think Eccleston delivered on what the doctor was supposed to be at that point in the doctor's life. I see him as a guy who's been through war and struggle, and he's just like trying to be like yeah nothing can touch me leather jacket I'm all slick whatever I got my little young nineteen year old companion whatnot mm -hmm, life is good. But that worked, and I loved it about him. I loved how he could just be that douche, you know? He could be that much of an asshole, and he just was like, yeah, I'm going to run the and die, whatever. He wasn't, like, condescend. He would be condescending openly. He would not be, like, the way Ten is, which kind of, like, I have my issues with Ten. But overall, I like Nine. I think he's great for the role he was playing. I loved him. I wish he was there for a much longer time. I feel like if he was there for at least another series, people would respect his character more. Sometimes who you see the most is who you like the most. Then, of course, there's Ten. Um, I'm going to start off by saying that David Tennant is an amazing actor. He plays the Doctor in an amazing way. He's got great timing. He's a brilliant actor. 
and I think that he completely encompasses the Doctor. That being said, Ten is an asshole. I feel like we're supposed to agree with him even when he's obviously wrong or short-sighted. Like in the Harriet Jones situation. Like, for me, it's just kind of like the Doctor keeps having thinking like, oh no violence, oh no guns, oh no weapons, and it's just like, to me, it makes it sound as, like, people have, I know there are some arguments and debates about, you know, Eleven and his relationship with River Song now because they're like, oh, the Doctor doesn't like violence, doesn't like guns, because that's David Tennant's Doctor, how he's all like, oh no, guns are evil, don't use a gun, I don't like guns, and how he can, like, like shits on Unit when they come, even though, like, you've been working with Unit for how fucking long, and all kinds of crap. And I'm just like, you know, even Nine was had a gun in the beginning and there was like there's this kind of sense that I get that they're trying to make it seem like all violence even when it's done in a way it's supposed to be like constructive is wrong like um Martha Jones when she blew up that alien ship the point is the, the earth was not ready for an invasion and she was protecting her planet and these people were ready to enslave her people and let them all jump off a goddamn to jump off these, these story buildings, people died in front of her. Is she supposed to just let these aliens go by because the doctor says, oh, it'll be okay? No! The doctor is not going to be there every time something goes wrong. And when he does, he acts when half of people are dead. I mean, look at, look at the times where he, where he saves people. How many people have died before that point comes where he saves them? If they had a defense system already in check, lives could be saved. And that means having teams like UNIT, having Torchwood, having, you know, having weapons to defend yourself against aliens, because at this point, they're helpless. And it's al it almost seems like he enjoys them being helpless so that he can come and save the day. And it's just great, and I love, actually love that kind of thing about the Doctor, because it's like, he's a hero, but how much of a hero really is he? You know, it's this great parallel, because he's like, he is a hero. But him being a hero depends on everyone else being complacent. I mean, the gun thing again is like, you know, don't use guns. You're responsible for the death of how many people? Just in the series that we see, how many worse than death situations has he put people into? How many people have died for him? How many people have done what he can't do because he has some sort of moral high ground that he doesn't want to cross? He's had companions in the past who have used guns, have used weapons. I mean, look at Ace. I mean, it's it's not a black and white thing. And one of the things that irritated me about that doctor and that kind of arc in the doctor is just how he's kind of like very preachy and so morally you know, on one side, it's just like, you are in no position to be morally white. You are so gray. You know, the color should be named after you. And for them to kind of put that kind of image onto him, it's kind of frustrating because it's like, you have killed so many people. I mean, and you risk people's lives because you're afraid to accept that sometimes people need to be destroyed. I'm sorry. Don't come and tell me that I should feel bad for dialects. Because they don't feel bad for me. They will shoot me in a fucking instant. Am I supposed to be like, oh no, I can't kill a dialect. They're, they're, no. Like, the whole thing with the Sultaran, when he went to the spaceship to, like, kill himself, to give them a chance to, to retreat. You fought them before. You know they're not going to retreat. What are you doing? It's, it's supposed to be moral, but it's just like, it's idiotic. You know them. You fought them before. They're not going to give up. He's just standing there like, I mean it. I mean it, guys. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to press the button. What happens? Someone has to come, press the button, and that kid dies. Because you cannot realize that... Because you can't press a button to destroy people who have no issue destroying you. It's not a matter of like death penalty or like this. It's like that these are monsters. These aren't even you and me. These are alien monsters whose only goal is to destroy, conquer, and kill people. People you know. People you care about. People have already died. It's not even like potential murder. This is, this people have already killed how many? Like when he gets rid of the, the, the clone dialect because he kills all the dialect army. Like, is he, am, I supposed to, am I supposed to feel bad for the dialects? Am I supposed to be like, oh no, that's horrible, bring them back? No. That's, that's ridiculous. I don't understand that. It, it was the thing that kind of boggles me. Like, even in episode dialect, where we're just like, what are you supposed to do? You know, 
um, be, be nice. I'm like, these people slaughtered his kind, started a war that killed him, killed his people, and made him to be this kind of person. And he was to take the moral high ground? For what reason? Rose does not, did not even meet a dialect before that time. She has no knowledge of what they have done and what they have been capable of. And she's telling the doctor to spare this one dialect. I mean, it's a great episode and does a lot of great stuff, but also it's just, it's idiotic. Because there's no reason why we as an audience who know this show and have seen what they can do should feel any sort of hesitation to be like, yes, kill them. Because they're gonna kill us. Uh, the, uh, what? I don't understand, Ten. I don't understand your logic. Right? Yeah. Um, and now, RTD versus Moffat. Um, put it simply, I prefer Moffat as a whole. I prefer his stories. I like how things function in the arc. I, I like his style of writing. I think it's great. I prefer it to RTD, but I still like RTD. I mean, I, I like everything Moffat has been doing thus far. I go back and I watch RTD, and it's like he'll have so many high points, but then he'll have, he'll also have within like, he'll have like within one series, one amazing out of sight, stupendous episode, and then have like six, two or three horrible episodes. It's just like he's so up and down with range, at least there's some consistency in Moffat's work, and there are some weak episodes, but at the same time, I, I can watch all of Moffat's episodes and be like, yeah, that's great. Season 6 has, like, the two deaths with, like, a few of the episodes, those, those three in between the good ones. But, as a whole, I, I, I enjoy Moffat's work a whole lot more than I enjoy RTD's. And I just like the way RTD writes. I like the arc. I like how everything continues. I don't... To me, you know, Monster of the Week stuff is just boring. I don't like Adventure of the Week or Monster of the Week. I like everything to have a connection. I like to have one story because you only have a certain amount of episodes. It's, like it's not like Doctor Who is 22 episodes where you have time to have that kind of stuff. You only have 13 episodes. You can't just have like 7 episodes or like 10 episodes of like Monster of the Week stuff. It's a little stuff peppered in and all of a sudden, oh look! We just brought everything back! Because that to me is what weakens some of his finale, especially the fourth finale. Like, Ron has good aspects. It's basically like, okay, we've been putzing around for so long, but now we're gonna bring everything back! It's like you're suffocating. Um, that being said, I still enjoy seasons one, series one to four, and I recommend everyone watch them, because Doctor Who's amazing.